Hello everybody, welcome back to Mega Projects. Just before we get started, I will say that this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Safety and security online are super important, shouldn't be a Mega Project, and it's very easy with Surfshark. Plus, 83% off and three months are free through the link in the description below. Now, at first glance, this mega project might look more extraterrestrial than of this world. The iconic triangular shape and the whisper thin design has the capability of slipping almost undetected in and out of enemy skies and the weaponry to deliver utter devastation on the ground. This deadly phantom is the B 2 Spirit, otherwise known as the Stealth Bomber. The B-2 Spirit is simply a mesmerizing aircraft on many levels, but it certainly starts with its rather sumptuous design. It is an aircraft of grace and of elegance, which contrasts with, well, the absolute hell that it is capable of unleashing. Having just passed the grand old age of 31, you might expect that this dark night of the skies could be nearing retirement age, or at least a backseat roll to more modern aircraft. But that isn't the case at all. The B-2 Spirit Spirit remains one of the most feared aircraft on the planet and a key component to the US Air Force. Like many pieces of military hardware developed in the 1970s and 80s, the fall of the Berlin Wall and the subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union meant that they entered service in a very different world than they'd originally been designed for. The long-distance stealth bombing raids on Soviet targets was always slightly unrealistic if you look at how the Cold War developed, but from 1991, the long-held enemy disappeared basically overnight, just as the most sophisticated bomber the world had ever seen was emerging. And that's a case of really expensive bad timing for the US military. This was a long development process and was to prove controversial because of its vast vast costs. By the mid-1970s, stealth technology was beginning to emerge. While most assumed that the B-2 and indeed the F-117, which we've already done a video here on Mega Projects about, are completely invisible to radar, but that's not quite the case. Their design severely limits the ability of enemy radar to track them, but they're certainly not completely invisible. In 1975, two separate companies were awarded contracts to begin developing the stealth technology. Lockheed was a little faster out of the gate and went on to design the F-117, also known as the stealth fighter, while Northrop, who was already developing classified technology at Area 51, would eventually go on to build the B-2. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. By the late 1970s, it was becoming clear that a long-range strategic stealth bomber was not only a possibility, but was now within grasp. US President Jimmy Carter was facing a stern test ahead of the 1980 presidential election in which he would go head to head with Ronald Reagan. The challenger had repeatedly claimed Carter was weak on defense, and perhaps to counteract some of this, the Carter administration announced in August 1980 that the US was indeed developing a stealth aircraft. Now, as you probably know, it didn't work, and Reagan won in an absolute landslide. The Advanced Technology Bomber ATB program was now a year into being, with two separate teams competing to build the world's first stealth bomber. Northrop and Boeing on one side, and Lockheed and Rockwell on the other. On October 20, 1981, the Northrop design was chosen. But a change in mission profile meant that the design was altered from a high-altitude bomber to a low-altitude terrain-following bomber. Just a small change, which added two years to development and a massive $1 billion — that's $2.4 billion today — to the eventual cost. The F-117 and the B-2 are often confused. They both carry a menacing futuristic appearance and roughly share the same style and shape, which at the time was what computer programs deemed to be the best for stealth flight. The biggest difference, during development at least, was what kind of project it was. While the F-117 was considered a black project, the kind of shady secretive undertaking that only a handful of people truly knew about, the B-2 was built as a grey project, meaning it was semi-secret, but 
much more widely known about. Still, those working on the B-2 were sworn to secrecy and required to undergo extensive background checks before they were allowed anywhere near the old Ford facility at Pico Rivera in California, which had been purchased and completely refitted to accommodate the B-2 development teams. This was, of course, a time of heightened political espionage with just about everybody spying on everybody else. Two Northrop employees, nearly 25 years apart, were caught and tried for selling secrets to foreign countries. Thomas Kavanaugh was arrested in 1984 for passing B-2 information onto the Soviets and was only paroled in 2001, while Nashir Gowadia was apprehended in 2005 for selling secrets to China and is currently serving a 32-year sentence. Now, you might not be protecting plans for a stealth bomber, but you probably do have information that you would rather remain personal, and that's where today's sponsor Surfshark comes in. The internet is kind of a weird place. There are people out there who want to ruin your day, they want to take your details, steal your identity, which is a pain in the ass. But fortunately, Surfshark has something called Hacklock. This searches databases for your passwords, which sounds like a bad thing, but no, Surfshark, they're the good guys. They'll let you know if your password is for sale out there, if you've been pawned, which keeps you safe because then you can go change the other passwords and protect everything else. Because look, we all have the same password for everything, or at least a lot of things. I mean, not me. I'd never do that. But, you know, people do. But it's not just about safety with Surfshark. Maybe you're like, mm, now that I am all safe, feeling nice and comfortable, I'm going to watch some Netflix. And then you're like, what? The show I want to see is only available in the UK and I live in... Minnesota? Well, what you can do is just use Surfshark VPN, flip it over to the UK and be like, great, now I can watch that show because, you know, Netflix has different programs in different countries. Surfshark's also totally unlimited, so if you want to go and download a movie in like Raw 8K or something, well, you totally can. Also, there's great support and 30 days money back if you don't like it. You can get 83% off and three months for free through the link in the description below or use my code MEGA. The B-2 made its first public appearance on the 22nd of November 1988 at the United States Air Force Plant 42 in Palmdale, California. The now famous photo of the craft head-on revealed just how incredibly thin the new stealth bomber was, and though the media were not allowed to take photos of the rear of the aircraft, Aviation Week discovered that there was no flight restriction on the airspace above the base, so they flew a plane over and managed to take a sneaky picture of what the Air Force was hiding, the suppressed engine exhausts, which reduces the exhaust temperature and so makes it even more difficult for the plane to be tracked, and more on that a little later in the video. So, as you can probably imagine, everyone was pretty satisfied with what they saw, despite the massive amount of money that had gone into development. By 1989, $23 billion, $48.2 billion today, had been spent on research and development alone. According to the General Accounting Office, the cost of each aircraft, including spare parts and software support, was $929 million, which is $1.5 billion today. <laughs> It's a bit more than Microsoft Update. It was a huge amount of money to be spending, but as long as it kept the dreaded Soviets at bay, well, that was all that mattered. And this is where things began to change. With the dissolution of the Soviet Union, the need for these aircraft was immediately called into question. In the mid-1980s, 132 B-2s had been ordered, a number which quickly came down to 75 before the end of the decade. In 1992, as the world faced a very different situation, President Bush announced that the number of B-2s would be limited to just 20. The Clinton administration, which followed, authorized that a final B-2 that had been a prototype model be added. And that's where things remained. 19 of the aircraft were named after states, preceded by Spirit of, and the two exceptions were Spirit of America and the Spirit of Kitty Hawk, named after Kitty Hawk, where the Wright brothers made their first controlled flight in 1903. First things first, this plane is good looking. The famed triangular shape is based on a Northrop aircraft that was trialed in the 1950s, the YB-49, and the two also have the same wingspan of 52.4 meters. Much of the B-2 is made of a carbon graphite composite material, which has the benefit of being stronger than steel, lighter than aluminium, and excellent at deflecting radar. And while we're on the subject of radar, the B-2 has a reported radar cross-section RCS, of about 0.1 meters squared, making it about as stealthy as your possibly going to get. Interestingly, and apologies for the vagueness in advance, the B-2 does not always operate in the same stealth mode. Apparently, a stealth up mode can be activated as the aircraft nears its target. Alas, that is a piece of information, like much on the B-2, that remains highly classified and 
we just have to be satisfied with that, I suppose. The shape of the B2 is based on the infinite flat plate shape, which is generally considered to be the ideal design for a stealth aircraft. If you look closely, you'll see that it is composed of multiple curves and rounded surfaces that merge to form a single, beautiful, yet deadly shape. This technique is known as continuous curvature and was only made possible by advancements in computational fluid dynamics in the mid to late 80s. But the shape is only one of several aspects that contributes to the B2 stealth. It also comes with reduced acoustics, infrared, and visual capabilities which combine to create a multi-spectral camouflage effect where an object is disguised to evade detection in a number of ways. As I mentioned earlier, the exhaust is a little different and doesn't use afterburners which would increase the infrared signature as well as the chances of it being seen or heard from the ground. The four General Electric F118 GE100 engines are buried deep within the fuselage which reduces the infrared signature even further. And if you think that the color is just by chance, well, the dark gray anti reflect Collective paint is designed to blend it into the sky, making it difficult to spot with a human eye. The aircraft comes with a crew of two, with the pilot in the left seat and the mission commander in the right. There is the option to include a third crew member, but as far as we know, this is rarely done. As we're just coming to, some of the missions that the B-2s have taken part in have pushed the 40-hour mark, and with this in mind, the B-2 is highly automated and has a toilet and even cooking facilities on board. The B-2 is 21 meters in length and has an empty takeoff weight of 71,700 kilograms, which is almost exactly the same weight as the Space Shuttle Endeavour. Now, you might be surprised to hear that it's not a particularly fast aircraft. If you remember, there are no afterburners in the engines, and it has a top speed of just 1,010 kilometers an hour, that's 630 miles per hour, making it roughly seven times slower than the absolute rocket that is the US X-15 fighter jet. So we know that it's difficult to spot, but what exactly can it rain down on the unsuspecting targets below? Firstly, the aircraft comes with absolutely no defensive firepower, but can carry 18,000 kilograms of ordnance spread over two bomb bays. During its development, it was thought the B-2 would carry nuclear weapons, but that has been expanded to include precision strikes, and along with the B-61 and B-83 nuclear bombs, it can carry AGM-129 ACM cruise missiles, CBU-87 combined effects munitions, Gator mines, and tank weapons, and the CBU-97 sensor-fused weapon, cluster bombs, among many others. In short, it's pretty versatile. To give you some numbers of exactly how many bombs it can carry, the B-2 can support 16 nuclear bombs, 36 340kg CBU class bombs, or a massive 80 226kg class bombs, such as the Mark 82 or GBU-38. The B-2 made its debut on the world stage during the Kosovo War in 1999, in which the US claimed it had been responsible for destroying 33% of Serbian targets over two months. In total, NATO flew 34,000 missions during the war, with the B-2s only taking part in 50 of them. However, and to give you a good idea of just how much they can carry, they were responsible for 11% of the ordnance that fell. The Balkan conflict also saw the first of some truly marathon fights, with six aircraft making their way from from their base in Missouri to Yugoslavia, a trip of a truly arse-numbing 30 hours. But that was nothing compared to one mission in Afghanistan during Operation Enduring Freedom, when a B-2 completed a 44-hour journey from the US to Afghanistan and back. They have also seen combat in both Iraq and most recently in Libya, first during the last days of Muammar al-Gaddafi and then in 2018 when two B-2s attacked an ISIS training camp, dropping a whopping 108 226 kilogram precision-guided joint direct attack munition bombs, killing 85 militants. During combat operations, no B-2 has ever been lost to enemy fire, but one did crash in 2008 shortly after takeoff. Both the pilot and commander were able to eject safely and the cause of the accident was later found to have been a buildup of moisture in the aircraft's port transducer units, which measure air temperature before feeding the information to the flight computer. As I mentioned right at the start of this video, these aircraft have now reached the ripe old age of 31, and while in human terms that might not be particularly ancient, in military terms it's getting on a bit. It's often not that aircraft or indeed any piece of military equipment is suddenly of no use, but the speed at which technology develops is 
well, extraordinary. That being said, don't expect to be saying goodbye to the B-2 anytime soon. To give you an idea of the projected longevity, the US Air Force originally stated the B-2s would have lasted until 2058, which would have had them pushing 70 years old, but a recent budget has stated that they will be retired no later than 2032. And that just might be because there is a new aircraft on the block, or at least on the road to the block. We don't know a whole lot about the B-1 Raider, no pictures exist, and very little information has been released except we should expect it to enter service around 2025. The only artist rendering that has been released shows a similar design to the B-2, but with a certain 21st century dash of cool. So watch this space, maybe we'll be covering that in a few years. The B-2 is unquestionably both one of the most technologically advanced aircraft on the planet and one of the most iconic. It has come to symbolize American might and prestige, and often appears at aircraft shows or performing a flyby at major events. Had the Cold War ended a little earlier, this aircraft may have never been built. The mammoth costs associated with it were high, but at least worthy to counter the threat of the Soviet Union. With their biggest rival out of the way, it didn't take long for the numbers of the anticipated B-2 fleet to be slashed. It's an astonishing aircraft. With the program costing an eye-watering $72 billion adjusted for inflation, it's not difficult to see how a series of administrations have veered away from it. But forget the money. This is an aircraft, along with its cousin, the F-117, that has completely transformed the world of strategic bombing. And what's more, there is so much of its technology that remains classified. It is a true wonder of the skies. A futuristic, dark, grey ghost. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check out our fantastic sponsor, Surfshark, linked to below. And thank you for watching.